Hello everyone. Welcome to Achievers IAS classes. Let's start our discussion on the current events of the day that is 18th December 2017. The first issue in news today is regarding the recent amendments proposed to the management of patients with terminal illness which has various provisions regarding euthanasia. Euthanasia as we know is practiced in two forms. One is active euthanasia where the patient or an individual he is administered a lethal dose of drugs causing death while the other one is passive euthanasia where the medication or life supporting systems are withdrawn from the patient thereby resulting in death in india the debate of euthanasia is ongoing since the landmark judgment of supreme court in the aruna shanbag case and the growing voices of right to dignity of an individual with respect to his or her medical treatment with this background let's just see what are the recent amendments proposed the first one is regarding the requirement of the hospitals to set up approval committees for considering cases of passive euthanasia and any distortion of facts before such committees is liable to both a jail term as well as a fine the next proposed amendment being palliative care to patients even when they have opted for passive euthanasia which i have already explained is the withdrawal of medical treatment or the life support system of a terminally ill patient and the new amendment makes it clear that all the provisions under the bill are applicable only to cases of passive euthanasia as active euthanasia is still not permissible under the law the supporters of euthanasia put forward various points including euthanasia provides a way to relieve extreme pain of the patient when the person's quality of life is low as compared to a healthy individual it also frees up medical funds to help other people rather than the terminally ill patient however arguments against euthanasia include the provisions may be misused in order to contain healthcare cost and various ethical debates on the value of a human life we we'll look into this issue in further detail when the amended bill is presented in the parliament with that let's move on to the next issue in news today which is an editorial on the issue of triple talaq as i have already discussed before the practice of triple talaq or talaq ke ibadat is not in accordance with the various tenets of islamic personal laws itself and the process of talaq has to be executed over a period of 3 months and not a single sitting in this regard the supreme court had declared the practice of instant triple talaq as unconstitutional and illegal to which end the government formulated a draft bill outlawing the practice the editorial today is arguing that criminalizing the practice of triple talaq is unwarranted and it fails to act as a deterrent to the practice in this regard the author is arguing that the practice of instant triple talaq is viewed as sinful and improper by the community itself and criminalizing a civil offense might alienate some sections of the muslim masses and also it highlights the existing laws like the protection of women from the domestic violence act which allows for the prosecution of husband for inflicting any pains be it physical emotional or economic abuses to add to all this by criminalizing the practice it might negatively affect the husband's capacity to pay alimony to his divorced wife but as we discussed earlier we should never forget that even after supreme court declared the practice as illegal and unconstitutional there were cases reported of the practice of triple talaq with that let's move on to the next issue in news today which is regarding the udan scheme of the civil aviation ministry the issue is in news because of the concerns expressed over the paucity of funds which is required for providing the viability gap funding to the operating airlines let's just briefly look into what is the scheme all about the udan scheme 
as the name itself suggest which is ude desh ka aam nagrik aims to facilitate air travel by capping prices and by providing various incentives to the airlines to bring down the cost of air travel and make it affordable to the masses to realize this objective the scheme aims at providing connectivity to underserved and unserved airports through revival of existing airports and construction of low cost no frills airport towards this end the airline operators could seek viability gap funding from the government when operating on less profitable or not profitable routes apart from various concessions given on airport utilities or aviation fuel the scheme is in line with the civil aviation policy of the government and has various spillover effects to the economy with that let's move on to the next issue in news today which is regarding the strong opposition to the draft national medical commission bill by the indian medical association the draft bill aims to replace the medical council of india with a new body which is being opposed by the indian medical association as it feels the proposed legislation will make it completely answerable to the bureaucracy thereby resulting in loss of autonomy we have already seen in my previous videos regarding the various provisions under the proposed bill which include replacing medical council of india with the new body called the national medical commission creation of a medical advisory council to formulate the national agenda for medical education and creating a statutory basis for common entrance exams at the undergraduate and postgraduate medical courses with that let's move on to the next issue in news today which is regarding the employee provident fund as we know the contribution towards the employees provident fund is dependent on the basic wages and dearness allowance of the employee and both the employer as well as the employee contribute around 12% each towards the fund this fund is accessible to the employee after attaining the age of 58 years when the employee is eligible to get a monthly pension the employee provident fund organization in this regard had placed a ceiling over the maximum contribution towards the fund to the employer and the employee but in 1996 it had passed an amendment giving an option to contribute the full salary of an employee towards pension however a majority of employees remained unaware of the amendment and couldn't benefit out of this amendment because it had to be opted in by the employee within a period of 1 month in this regard the 2016 supreme court ruling said that there was no cut off date to avail benefits under the amendment the issue is important because we had seen the widespread protests which erupted due to various controversies over the changes made by the government towards the access of employee provident funds which it was forced to withdraw later with that let's move on to the next issue in news today which is regarding the demands raised by the confederation of indian industry to dilute the stake of central government in public sector banks it is arguing that even though the norms for minimum government stake in public sector banks had been relaxed to 52% from the previous 58% the actual holding in many banks is more than 80% highlighting this fact the confederation of indian industry argues that by diluting the government stake in such psbs and by initiating public issues the government can help in the recapitalization of these banks which we know are overburdened with the non performing assets in this regard the confederation has suggested the center to set up a holding company to look into the day to day management of the public sector banks thereby reducing political interference we can recall that the government has already set up bank boards bureau and it also intends to create the bank investment company as a holding company 
of the public sector banks. This is a very important issue given the government's commitment to adhere to the Basel III norms as well as revive investment cycle in the economy. With that, let's move on to the next issue in news today, which is regarding the UN vote on a draft nullifying the recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. The United Nations Security Council is considering a draft resolution which reaffirms that the status of Jerusalem cannot be unilaterally changed following the controversial remarks of US President. I have already discussed why Jerusalem is important for the three religious communities in the region that is the Christians, Jews and the Arabs and the Oslo Accord which aimed at a two-state solution along with India's stand on this issue in my previous news analysis videos and I request those who have missed it to go back and watch the same. The final issue in news today is regarding the plans of the Kolkata Municipal Corporation to use drones to identify breeding grounds of Aedes aegypti mosquito. This is aimed at fighting dengue and it involves surveillance of water logging areas, mainly rooftops of multi-story buildings, as well as bridges and flyovers. It is important to us because UPSC has previously asked questions over various diseases and the disease causing agent or the carrier of the disease and as we know this particular species of the mosquito is responsible for various other infections thereby demanding government attention to control its population and check infections. With that I am wrapping up today's news analysis. Do like, share and comment to support this initiative. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.